So recently this arrived, this is the Retro Tink 5X and it's going to replace my trusted and hard working Frame Meister. Oh well, let's take out all the cables and stuff and let's replace the Frame Meister. Now as you can see this Frame Meister was really used to its max. Practically every port on it is filled with something. So I have one um, bit of a concern. See that? That's a D sub. The Retro Tink doesn't have a D sub socket on it, so I'm gonna have to do something about that. And also, it doesn't have HDMI in, which is a bit of a problem. Alright, so the Frame Meister is out. We'll need to dust the top of that PC. Let's move on to the next section, and that is getting out the cable which is attached to the end of the PS2. Now under here is a complete mess. It is basically a spaghetti of wires. Don't forget there are around about 13 things connected to this TV. Okay this is the emulation PC which is used to make battle of the ports in most cases. Now that used to be connected to the Frame Meister and the Frame Meister went to the capture card. But now we've got the PC going direct to a switch box or a two-way HDMI splitter so I can see what's on the TV and capture it at the exact same time on the PC over there. Now as I said this used to go through the Frame Meister but um, not anymore. It's a direct feed from the PC to the TV and the capture card. Alright so let's take a look and see what we get inside the Retro Tink box. So we get um, a little sticker there, probably never use it but I'm sure some people would like to put that on their laptop. We got a little postcard with instructions about the remote, the remote not being very uh, friendly to be honest there it is, it's got nothing to do with the retro tank, just some random remote. We got a braided USB uh, micro cable and that is used to connect uh, the retro tank to the power and the retro tank itself comes in this uh, hemp style bag I guess. Paul Jesus is pretty dark in this scene. This whole thing is being filmed on the phone and I forgot to switch on the light. Stupid me. Now taking a look at the Frame Meister compared to the Retro Tink, if you can just about see it, the Retro Tink is a lot smaller, um, but it is a little bit thicker than the Frame Meister. And here we go with the ports on the back. And as you can see, the Retro Tink is kind of limited. Got an S-Video in and a component in and uh, that's it. The HDMI is HDMI out, so you're missing the D sub and the HDMI ins, which the Frame Meister has. And to be honest, for me, they were very, very useful. And the Frame Meister also has a um, uh, S video on the front of it, as well as composite in. The Retro Tank does have an RGB input, and that is on the side of it. See, there's the S video and the uh, composite in at the front of the Frame Meister. So what I've got to do now is update the firmware on the RetroTINK 5X. It's very easy to do, you just connect it to the PC, download the program and the firmware and run the software, it's very easy. When the firmware is updated, the uh, LED turns blue, just like that. Alright, let's get this connected over to the TV. Now first thing I'm going to do is connect up the RGB and as you can see there we've got uh, our RGB connections but all of those are JP21 connectors wired up differently than SCART and if I plug in that switch box directly to the um, retro tank it's gonna blow it up but not a problem because I got this cable right here which is made directly for the retro tank I got this from Yahoo Auctions Japan and it is actually made to connect a JP21 up to the retro tank so what I've got to do is connect that up to the uh, output on the uh, RGB switch box and connect the other end to the retro tank. Gotta make sure I get it the right way around and in it goes. Now we've got the other problem to deal with now. So i got a couple of consoles which output audio through um, the uh, red and white cables you see there. They are the Neo Geo MVS and the PC Engine um, CD interface. Now the reason they output the audio through those cables is because the uh, video outs on those machines do not output in stereo. 
Well, the um, PC Engine does, but only for the PC Engine itself, not the CD audio. Now, normally you put them, those cables into the front of the Frame Meister, and the Frame Meister allows you to mix and match video and audio signals, so you can have RGB video with the audio coming from the composite port. Now, I've also got to uh, do something about this D sub cable for the PlayStation 2. And uh, one way I can fix that is uh, use a component cable for the PlayStation 2. Now, my plan is is to connect the component cables to the back of the RetroTINK and then connect the PC Engine and the Neo Geo audio cables uh, along with the uh, uh, PlayStation 2 audio cables to this switch box here. It's got two inputs on the back and uh, one input on the front. And the idea is to uh, take the output and put it into the RetroTINK and then when I play either PlayStation, Neo Geo or PC Engine uh, CD games, I can just uh, switch the audio using the switch box. That's if the RetroTINK lets you mix and match inputs and uh, video inputs and audio inputs. At this point in time, I don't know. So uh, let's get this wired up first. So we'll put Neo Geo on the uh, second input. We'll put PC Engine in the uh, first input. And uh, let's get that uh, PlayStation 2 component cable and uh, let's find the audio channels of that. And we'll put them into the uh, third input on the front of the uh, switch box. Well, after connecting all this up, it turns out that the RetroTINK does not allow you to mix and match video and audio signals. And that is a major um, downfall in my opinion. Um, that was one highlight of the Frame Meister. The thing is, I can still get audio out of the machines through the video out, but it's in mono and um, I don't want mono audio, it's got to be stereo. So as you can see, we've got everything set up and um, everything goes through the amp. And um, what I was thinking is I could put the audio into the amp using the, uh, you know, the uh, analog audio inputs. But the amp doesn't let you do that. It only lets you mix uh, HDMI video and um, digital optical uh, audio. So again, that idea didn't work. So what I've gone and done is I've gone and ordered um, a dig uh, analog video in to digital video out uh, converter. And that will take the uh, sound from the switch box and plug it into the, uh, uh, the uh, Toslink input on the amp. That way we can mix the uh, HDMI signal from the uh, RetroTINK with the Toslink audio for games which are for games that need it. Okay, let's test out the RetroTINK and we're going to use Dead or Alive on the Sega Saturn. And the reason is, is because this is a game that runs in 480i, higher than any PlayStation game. And <laughs> just had to throw that in there. And um, this also switches resolutions. Now, we're using the frame lock mode at the moment here. And the reason for this is so I can show you what a frame master used to do. Watch the screen blank out after the loading screen comes on. So this is running in standard resolution, 240p. But see, it blanks out and you can hear the music, but you can't see the game. And by the time it comes back on, yeah, the match has already started and you've been getting your ass kicked. But the good thing with the retro tank is you can put it into another mode, which eliminates this uh, blacking out when game consoles switch resolution. Just watch this. So here we are with the 240p uh, title uh, character select screen and the uh, loading screen. And watch when it switches to 480i, there is no dropped uh, signal. Perfect. That is absolutely perfect. Now using this mode, uh, as you can see in the top corner of the screen, it's called triple buffer mode. It does add a little bit of lag, but it's only 0.25% of a frame up to 1.25% of a frame. And to be honest, you're not going to notice. And this TV is extremely fast, so I'm probably uh, thinking this is on the lower end of the frame lag. Um, this is a 4K LG with a, you know, Dolby Atmos vision and HDR and 120 hertz and... Uh, what's it called, a uh, black screen insertion and all that. It's got all the bells and whistles. So it's a pretty fast TV. So it's probably only adding about 0 0.25 uh, frames of a uh, lag there. And as you can see, going to the next match as well, it works perfectly fine. Something else I want to show you about the RetroTINK, which the Frame Meister didn't do. 
and that is uh, handling an interlaced signal very well. Now normally when you put this game on a CRT you will get a little bit of flicker because it is running at uh, 480i and you do get a little bit of flicker on a CRT but when you play it on a, a modern screen you do see the interlacing really badly. So uh, what I'm going to do is go through the uh, different uh, options here. So motion adaptive is the best. This is weave. As you can see weave you get some lines on the actual um, motion which looks pretty bad. Blend a little bit blurry for my like. Bob the interlace that's pretty much what the TV would do. And uh, we also got um, a version of Bob the interlace with a uh, here you go linear blob linear blob <laughs> linear bob which uh, kind of uh, blurs things a little bit but motion adaptive uh, deinterlacing is really nice um, let's just take a look at weave again see when you jump here it looks really bad doesn't it look at that you can see all the lines and so on and that's what it would look like on a, a frame meister not the best in the world again linear bob is okay but it's a bit blurry but motion adaptive looks really really nice Again, let's uh, try this out with Weave. So as you can see, as I'm uh, dashing forward, you can see the uh, interlaced lines on the signal. I mean, it's sharp, but doesn't look very nice. But when you put it into motion adaptive, it's still sharp. But everything looks very nice and solid. It blends everything together really well. And there's another bonus for using the RetroTINK 5X. You don't miss out the boot sequence of your favorite consoles. Frame Meister always used to miss them out. Another strong thing about the RetroTINK X5 is the scanline mode. It has a lot of different options, far better than the Frame Meister. I like these uh, slot mask and uh, grill type uh, uh, scanline options. In fact, my favorite one is grill number one it looks really nice I mean looking at it on YouTube here is definitely not um, doing it any justice it looks much 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 better in real life um, this next one here the LCD one that just looks awful god knows why they use that <laughs> that's nasty so let's take a look at um, it using the uh, a grill uh, scanline option from a normal viewing distance and as you can see that looks absolutely wonderful probably one of my favorite uh, features of the retro thing well that and uh, it doesn't lose signal when the console switch resolution so we are running this game uh, it is a 240p game it's running uh, through the retro thing at 1080p on a 4k screen and as you can see it looks beautiful so am I happy with the retro tink yes I am I mean it does have some down points um, it's missing various inputs which caused me to buy new cables and I have to think of a new way to get the audio going from uh, one system to another um, you know the ones that don't output stereo sound through the normal video output um, but yeah uh, they're just little things there are ways to get around those issues so overall, I'm very happy. Mind you, it is an expensive item.